to Good Morning, everybody. Everybody's sober from last night. I see some tired faces. That's good. So let me put you, know, put you a little bit to sleep. Listen to this relaxing music in your nightmares. <laughs> Hi, my name is Inan Zur. Welcome to my talk. I have written here that I need to do an icebreaker. So here is my Donald Trump latest um, implementation. Um, <clears throat> this is a great and tremendous industry. Um, uh, yeah, it's, um, and nobody, nobody is better than me and this thing, and you guys are all fake composers. But the rest of it is history. So anyways, a little bit about myself. Uh, I was born in Israel and raised in Israel. Um, really liked music. When I was 19, I recruited to the Israeli army, and I told them that I am a musician, I am a composer, so please, anywhere you put me, um, no loud noises and um, no dust and other things that could really disrupt me. So the Israeli army with their famous sense of humor put me uh, in the elite tank unit. Um, so basically, um, since then, four years later, I cannot hear a pitch higher than a cello. Um, and it's really interesting because you know, like these people that are playing these silver sticks, um, um, I, it's like, it's really great minds. I, I don't know what they're playing, but it's, it's wonderful. So I'm writing a lot of these things. I don't, you know. But anyways, um, it's kind of like a very interesting year for me this year because I'm celebrating 20 years of writing music for computer games. Um, my first computer games I wrote on 1997. It was Klingon, Klingon Academy. And I really managed to survive, I think, this um, harsh industry. Um, first, because I'm really good looking. But other than this, um, um, the competitive edge. Like, I'm looking at each one of you. And remember, I always look at them. It's like, this guy, probably. This guy has to be much better than me. What can he come up with that I can't? And this is basically what drives me. I love competition, and I always try to find something that will be interesting and different. And first and foremost, you got to love what you're doing. If you're not in love with what you're doing, and if you're not in love with the whole notion of writing music, then forget about it. It'll suck, because this world is full of disappointment and turndowns and criticism and a lot of harsh things. And you know, every once in a while you get like, oh, that sounds great, oh, this is good, but um, Fallout main theme, what you hear um, here is um, version 29. Um, so you could understand. I mean, this thing. So let's start talking about it. I'm originality and signature factor. Um, when we're basically talking about this thing, we got to really understand um, what is originality. And I always would say to you one thing. If you want to be original, start with something that is the less original thing you think about it, okay? It has to be something that convey, something that people know, that they recognize. And only after that, insert just a little thing that is different, okay? After you did it and it's cool, repeat it. Just repeat it a few times so it'll become the hook. If you manage to do this, your first layer will be something pretty known, pretty solid, and on top of it, you did something that is a little different, 
then you've got something definitely um, going. And I'll give you a little example, all right? Um, actually, I'm going to play you a cue now that nobody, seriously, except of myself and uh, Mark Lampert, the legendary um, Bethesda um, audio director, ever heard. And this is the first cue ever to be written for uh, Fallout 4, never ended up uh, on the game. Nevertheless, it set up the tone for the whole more action for the game. this to Mark, he said, what the hell is that? And, and, <laughs> and I said to him, well, this is me um, playing, hitting my piano, scratching my guitar, hitting, scratching, scratching, hitting, taking some bass, bowing it, and doing all this stuff. And he said, why? And I said, because Fallout is all about alternate. If you know Fallout, if this is reality, this is another reality. So basically, they probably think the same, but use different means to pronounce themselves, or to talk about, or to do things, because it's a different reality. So instead of drums, let's use piano. Instead of whatever, I mean, any other like shaker percussion, let's just you know hit on guitars. Let's just throw in a junkyard. And the way I did it is basically, totally experimenting with my little Zoom instrument, like probably each one of you have it, and if you don't, please get it, because this is amazing. It's a $100 thing that it's a lifesaver, because you're going about, and then you could record anything, and then you turn it into your own sound machine. And that basically brings me to this signature thing, okay? Because the combination between something that you know and expect, in this case, rhythm and rhythmical patterns, and then weird sounds that basically are not so common to hear, this combination is a great start to create a signature, a signature um, touch. Um, here's another little example. I love cello. I told you, I mean, this is the highest instrument I could hear. Um, so I really love cello. But Fallout is such a lonely game. You're wandering in the wilderness. Okay, what could be better than play a cello with a foghorn? <laughs> Because instead of using synth as my bottom um, pad, I use this foghorn. And a little secret about it, Bethesda is not going to be happy, uh, but anyways, it's not only the foghorn. 
I actually record myself also singing with my ugly voice with the foghorn. So basically what you get, you create your own pad. We all know what pad is. If you're a composer, you put a pad, okay. But what about if this pad could be something that somebody could recognize as something that is, has nothing to do almost with music, okay? It's a freaking foghorn, okay? But you use it as a musical pad. With this, you play the cello, there you go. Okay, another uh, thing is, it's more musical term, is actually introducing some rhythmical, uh, I, I'd say, uh, things that are not really clear. Where is one here? Where the hell is one here? not a good thing at all because then you will start to recognize when the, the cue starts to loop and after the third time you'll shut it down okay but if you could just create something that is there it's creating the tension but you don't really do this or you don't know where it's one two three four one two three four you made something because it will keep you engaged, it will keep you interested in what you're doing, okay? All right. Just forget about everything I said so far. You don't really need all this shit. Um, sorry, I cannot swear. Um, all this thing. Um, just look at Hollywood. Um, I think 80% or 70% of the music that is being written in Hollywood today just bound because of many consideration to be what we call mainstream. Um, and mainstream is something that we'll expect and it will be there, it will do the job, but if you listen to it, it's not what we call original because we heard it in some kind of versions before. But in games, and I must tell you, and I'm really pride on our industry now, jokes aside. People in games will always look for something different. They have more courage. And I am encouraging you and to encourage the audio director to go places. All right? Just venture a little bit. It will really make you know the whole thing stand out. And we are pioneering today in many ways a lot in the music industry at large. I'm serious about it. We are really doing a lot of pioneering and discovering, sometimes more than movies, because they have so many consideration, and we could just open our wings and fly. But first we need to understand that if we will do something more than 20% original, forget it. Nobody will listen to it because it will be just plain weird. If we are able to get 80% something, like let's take um, whatever, the, the cues that I played before. Think about it. About 70 to 80% of the elements there were not original. 
It had rhythm, it had harmony, it had melody, but it had a foghorn. It had a scratching chair. It had something that was a little different. Just this little thing is what's important. And if you could find this thing and insert it inside something that will be communicative, then you got it. By the way, it's a smaller room, and I really love conversation. So if you really feel compelled to ask any question during it, I'm not waiting for you know, the question session. Just raise your hand and ask. It's really important for me because I'm here to, to share a thing with you guys. OK, so let's go to work. I am, I got the gig. I need to write the music for Fallout. I need to learn, and most importantly, what do we want to say in the game? What is the game all about? Forget about originality, forget about all these music, forget about everything. What is the actual game wants from me? What do I want to tell the player? That's the most important thing. The rest of it, okay, I will deal with this. But now I need really to learn. And for that, I encourage each one of you, when you get a gig, you go to the studio, you really sit with the artist, you sit with the game designer, and you learn this thing. Um, I have a few people that I worked here before. Um, Andrew, for example, for, um, from Amazon, he knows how many times I went down there and we worked together. And other people here, it's just so important to learn about the game. And only then you start. Okay. Now, Fallout. Fallout is a different animal altogether. It's not that it's a post-apocalyptic world. This is not what's important. What's really important for me as a composer, that it is a parallel reality. It's a reality that basically got conjured somehow in the 50s, but right now we are in 2150. So it had, whatever, 200 years to evolve. So it's a parallel thing. So everything I'm doing will be a little twisted, a little out there. It, it's going parallel to our reality, but in a different way. And it's all about choices. The musical choice that you make should be based on this premise that this is a parallel reality, okay? So let's hear some, you know, example. Here at Brightness Calling, this is my vase in my living room, and I'm basically playing it and bowing it and record it and then layer some other stuff with it. And basically, you hear harmony. And you hear other elements, but you really can't tell. Is that sin? Is that organic? Is that organic sin? What the hell is it? And this is sort of like the secret of the Fallout score, that you create something that you definitely could connect with because it talks to you, but the way it's being created is just, just a little quirky, just a little different. The elements are different. I'm not using sets, libraries. I usually try to create my own libraries. Uh, there are some companies like Umlaut, for example, that helps you out um, manage the shit you're recording. So this is really helpful.
Now, in this one, for example, using the orchestra. I got some French horn dudes just to scream into their horns. Literally scream. And get banged on chairs. So I did use traditional instruments, but in a little less traditional way. Because when you play the horn, you have to also shout into it. It creates some kind of like a, a different thing. And again, it's not about how you do it, it's about your musical choices. Today, everybody is doing crazy things, but the choices you're making of how to use these things is basically what creates the special signature. Or you could use untraditional instruments in a traditional way. And this is solo piano. What you hear right now is only one instrument. Everything I could take out of the piano, basically, that is not playing the actual piano. And it doesn't matter how creative you get or how crazy. I don't care if you go to a cave in the Alps and play on a goat. It, you know, it doesn't matter. What matters is that for the specific place in Fallout, this piano craziness things really worked because the place there was some sort of like dilapidated village with lots of metallic things. So this is what worked for that. I just didn't have it, so I created it. And this is the thing, never just set back to the I don't have the sound. You don't have the sound? Create it, work. God's sake. Um. <laughs> okay, so, and here's another example. Here, for example, I did the other way around. This actually are tons of things. If before we heard only one instrument, this is about 20 instruments all play together and try to do the same thing. Again, in a non-traditional way. So we have a guitar, we have a piano, we have a cello, we have an oil jug, um, we have a soundboard and other things, but they all try to basically mimic each other and really basically give you the same element, but each one in a different way. And this is what you get. Again, why? Not because, ah, uh, because I thought it's really clever. No, because I thought that this in this specific place in the game, it was really needed. If I thought that the solo flute that I can't hear, well, is good thing there, then I would write a solo flute. Again, it's about what the game wants to do. All right, so basically, when we're choosing the, 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 the palette, and this is actually a really interesting thing, we want to go and not listen to music at all. All. And that's actually a really interesting thing that I found really beneficial. I sat with the audio director and told him, what do you hear as far as the ambient? Play me the wind you hear. It'll be a little different than a regular wind. Play me the thunders. Play me the animal calls. Play me everything. Play me the people. 
how do you envision them, all right? Only then, oops. Uh, I think I crushed. Oh, there, I'm good. Only then we could get going. After that, I start to try to mimic what he played me. And this is the first cue ever that actually found itself inside Fallout. I tried to mimic a animal calls that he played me with some wind and thunders. gave me. I didn't really try to create music. I was thinking if we would kill all the sound effect and we'll play only that, that could serve as some kind of your sound effect element. And this is another way and it's very unique from Fallout. By the way, this thing that he played that was basically some of the wolves that he played me is a string quartet that I recorded in my studio, slowed it down about half tempo and lowered them in one octave. And this is how it sounds. And it sounded a little bit like a wolf to me. And it was really, really, really inspirational for me. Let's talk harmony a little bit. Here I decided, okay, let's take piano. When I'm using piano here in its own sound I made sure that all the instruments behind the piano are detuned everything except of the piano and that's what created this kind of a thing that you you hear that everything is detuned so when the piano plays its own regular harmony and everything is detuned, then you get this effect. Another example of using only blowing instruments, didgeridoo and voice. So you see how many things you actually basically, and how many tools, but they're so simple. You don't need to work hours and hours and hours of thinking. But this is the singer Mimi Page singing along with 
myself blowing into a weird didgeridoo. Um, it, it doesn't really matter. This is technical. But this music gives a certain feel that is so, so, so iconic to Fallout. Because this combination between these instruments is what creates what we called the Fallout signature. By the way, um, for this kind of weirdness, I really recommend Valhalla. Um, you know, Valhalla is like a great plugin. Um, gives you this huge reverb, um, and I'm using it a lot when it comes to these kind of uh, things. So, just a little technical thing. If you've noticed, I didn't get too much into technical. Um, descriptions. I'm more into the content, but even more, I'm more into the concept. Each one of you has his or her own voice, and the way you're going to get it, I'm sure that there is a way. But remember, as long as you're not being captured and be pressured by, oh, I need to be clever, I need to find some kind of a thing that nobody ever found. No, it's not about that. It's about what you hear as far as what works best for the game and then try to bring it to life. These things works great for Fallout, so I did it. If I had to do a live orchestra for it, I would do live orchestra. It's not about how sophisticated we are. It's about how committed we are to create what we believe can be the ultimate signature sound for the game. Now let's get funny a little bit. And I'll give you some secrets. It's not real secrets, but it's so primitive, really is. Okay. I give you the Fallout Ensemble. <laughs> um, yeah, no joking. And not only that, I prepared for you a little treat. Again, nobody ever, I was not allowed up until today to um, play it because um, Bethesda, and rightfully so, are very, very protective on what um, we're allowed to say and what we're not allowed to say. So this is just the tip of the iceberg of things. All right. Raw material. Here is me playing bowed guitar. <laughs> If you didn't go to the dentist yesterday, then maybe tomorrow. Here's another one. Ouch. Even I could hear that. Um, but here is this in a cube.
And I didn't want to take a professional player. If I wanted, I, I would take. Okay? But it's not what I wanted to say. Here's another example. Yes, this is me. Singing into a ditch. These sounds never heard before for live audience. Yep. Monday morning. In a queue. Remember what I told you? Element like harp, everybody knows. Get we get like a synth pad. We all know about it. And here's our friend. there and you don't know what exactly it is because it's stupid but it works <laughs> sorry <laughs> here's my famous you see this thing I call her Uka. <laughs> In cue. <laughs> Again, you use eighty percent. And again, the reason is this Karina was what I thought about when he played me the howling wind. It's not because I had an ukarina. Well, actually, yeah, also because this is what I have. But also, it was howling enough for me. So what the hell? Let's stick it in there. And it just worked. Harmony is so simple, nothing, no, doesn't get any clever. Remember, always keep the 80% premise of known and acceptable and touchable concept that you could relate to and then give it to them. How about percussions? Somebody pissed me off, but... In cue?
again, nothing sophisticated about the actual rhythmical pattern, nothing sophisticated about the tempo, nothing sophisticated at all. But still, you're using different elements for that. And why? Not because we really want to outsmart somebody. This is not the purpose. The purpose is, well, that a parallel reality, these guys probably didn't have drums, didn't have any like these things. They had junkyard. So probably that's what their, whatever, ensemble sounded like. Another little secret. Um, the low, um, we don't have, I think, maybe we have a subwoofer here. Okay, so really, really cool from time to time to have like a really low sub bass thing, okay? And I tried to create it out of things that I have in my studio rather than really go and make like a synthetic sound or using whatever. 808 drum machine thing, okay? The first thing is actually interesting. I don't think even if you could hear it, but this is knocking with your finger on a bass trap. If you do it and then you amplify it, this shit has so many loads you cannot even imagine. It's crazy. Some of it you just feel in your stomach. And you don't really need to hit it hard. You just do this. After sampling it and putting it as your like oomph bass drum, believe me, it's really effective. But it's different. Found oil jug that really amazing. Has so many things in it. Listen to this. That's a half full oil jag, plastic, that you hit with your finger. And it has so, so many lows, really. I mean, and again, in your soundscape, sometimes, especially in the battles and stuff, you really want to find something to support the whole thing. Same thing. If we're talking alternate reality, we want to find an alternative instruments and and basically that's 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 the whole thing you know so here's basically to sum it up a little bit because i, I want to give as much time as i can for questions i'm sure that there are a few um the most important thing to remember and i know I'm repeating myself here, but it's so important, and I feel that this is why I'm here to tell you. And I believe also that this is what really helped me also survive these 20 years, is understand that you are, A, part of a team. You're not a composer, you're a team player, okay? And I know that you have a lot of aspiration, I know that you have a lot of great musical ideas, forget about it. Come to the project as a blank page. Soak in the project and let it basically inspire you before you try to inspire the project with your ideas. Only then you could actually sort of like get the most immersive sound design and music into a project. If you don't force yourself into the project, if you don't really feel committed to say what the project wants to say, you know, then, 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 then just forget it. You could create a masterpiece musical, but it really will never be as immersive as it could be. Music in games doesn't really need to be heard. You don't hear a music in game. You feel the music in the game. You don't need to notice the music in the game. You need to live the music in the game. 
The music is basically something that drives you without you really know what drives you. It's there, but it's in your imagination. And if you remember that, then it's really going to help you to create successful um, scores. Um, I remember I just created a soundtrack, my first um, VR game for uh, Eagle Flight for Ubisoft. And I was talking to Marty O'Donnell. You probably know who Marty is. He's like the famous Hello composer. Um, and, and I asked him, like, so Marty, what do you think? You're really into VR. What do you think? How the music should sound in a VR? Because, like, it's everything. It's all around. And then he told me something that, and I was like, yeah, baby. This is it. So it's like, all right, the sound effects, the foley, the dialogue, yes, everything is around it. But music actually doesn't really exist. Music is the emotional layer. So it's right here in your bold, ugly head. <laughs> Why? Um, in between those ears that can't hear anything because of the amount of shells that <laughs> they saw and heard. So it's here. So you mix your VR score in stereo. So simple. Okay? And, I, and we did it. So all the sound effects is in 5.1, 7.1, 11.20. 20. I don't care. Music was mixed in hard stereo. And it worked like a charm. Because once everything else moved around and crazy and you're flying and everything, music was just there. And it stood out, but it was not in your way. You heard it extremely well, but it didn't really interfere with the action. And this is almost summing up what I was telling you about today. Finding the way, you call it original, you call it signature, but more than anything, it's really thinking what could be the one special thing that can give your project what it needs to be, you know, what it really called for from an emotional point of view. All right, great, let's hear you guys. Hello. Hi. Hi. Uh, I was curious for a game as big as Fallout, you know, hundreds of hours of gameplay. Uh, do you end up writing more music than you need, or is there? Do you feel? Was there any restriction on the <laughs> amount of material that you're putting out? Is there something that ends up being cut? Was there anything that you uh, that you created that you wish was in the game? that didn't make it, or is everything included? Right. Okay, so here's my uh, answer. Yes. <laughs> Great. <laughs> um, <laughs> yes to everything you said. Yeah. Do we need more music? Definitely. Mm. Did you create a lot of music and some of it is not ending up in the game? Totally. All right, mm. I mean, did you do stuff that you think you need to do and you didn't do? Always. You know, I mean, and, and basically you nailed it. Um, this is the secret that specifically for these kind of expansive games like Fallout, the amount of material that can be put in is immense. But then also the choices, and that's what I'm telling you all the time, choices. It's all about the choice you make, your artistic choice and what you really want to do. This is the most important thing. So, as I said, yes. Thank you. In addition to Valhalla Reverb, are there any software tools that you particularly like for processing the household sounds you've recorded? Oh, great question. So, um, I found that Sound Toys actually really works for me, if you guys are familiar. 
Um, it has a lot of things, of course, power plugins and everything, but the real secret, to me at least, is never use one plugin, A. B, never use the same plugin again and again in the same queue. Actually layering a plugin, and it almost doesn't matter. Everybody's doing great job. Wave's doing great job. I mean, I mean, I mean, everybody's doing great job. But actually creating a layer, it's like layers of instruments. I never use the same like string patch. I always layer at least three string patches on top of each other, and I'm playing each one of them separately, so it'll have different dynamics. Okay? Only then this is kind of created. So I'm not a, like a big on one instrument. I'm really big on the enhancement of um, and layering of elements. And this is usually what creates what I'm looking for. Awesome, thanks. Mm -hmm. Hi, Anand. Hey. Uh, second time I hear you speak, last time was at MIGS. Uh, always inspiring, as usual. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Um, the type of uh, music that you're creating is, uh, it seems to me like it's very well suited for semi-generative um, applications, like live reassembling of textures and music using middleware. Is this something you're doing, or you always prefer to have hard-bounced loops uh, that are already assembled? Oh, games? no, 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 no. Uh, let me stop you right here, and especially for Fallout. Every note is played. And if not in real time, it was played, recorded, and then only then recorded and looped. I am very, very much hands-on when I'm composing. I never use sort of like prepared loops or prepared Oh, no, that's things. not what I mean. I mean, um, for example, recording a bunch of, of uh, piano cues and then recording mm -hmm. a bunch of bowed guitar cues, right. but having all of those randomly reassembled in a, in a wise, uh, for example, software. Oh, yeah, 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 no, no, of course. I mean, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Is this something yeah. You're, you're doing? Yeah, right everything, I mean, actually, it's, it's a good question, and I hope I'm answering it correctly. Um, one thing that I'm not really great at the technical thing, but one of the things is to being a successful composer is really work with the right people. And I have to happen to have the right person that is creating a lot of, of my contact instruments. Uh, first, I use, uh, as I said, umlaut. Um, to help me out create like great loops, but also my assistant, Alex Ruger, is basically notoriously taking everything I'm recording and playing and make it into a contact um, um, library on my own. And it is so freaking great. All right, thanks a lot. <laughs> Hi, Anon, really hey. big fan. Um, I just wanted to ask you kind of about your approach to coming up with these cues. Um, do you kind of get the inspiration from the interesting sounds that you're creating and then create the composition around those sounds or do you have like a bed first or so what, basically what's your process? For Great this? question. Um, and basically, it's a great question and it's so hard to, to tell because the way I'm working is so intuitive. Um, I could sit and before I even play one note, I want to hear something. It all starting from me wanting to hear something. Mm -hmm. And then I'll start to experiment. And this something could be melody. This something could be, it doesn't have like a rules of, oh, okay, so I'll lay out the, chords, I love the melody, I love this, and then, no, 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 it doesn't work this way, at least for me. I will try to listen to this thing before even starting, and then if I got like an idea of, okay, so it should be this kind of sound, I'll play this sound, or I'll look for this sound. Once I found the sound, Usually, it will have inside of it already some kind of a melodic gesture. Yeah. And with all the enharmonics and stuff, many, many cases, it's also starting to create the harmonic texture. So you first listen to something, you know, before playing, and then you start 
sort of like the creative process. So it, no, I mean, it's not like, oh, melody, oh no, rhythm, oh no, oh, harmony, no, 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 no. It, it's not like this. Yeah. So it's more organic than that. Exactly, okay. exactly. On that note, um, if you aren't finding good inspiration from that, do you have a process that you like to go through that, that will, you can derive something from? Well, yes. And again, I recommend each one of you to listen to other people. Um, I got a lot of inspiration for other composers. I hate them because they're so good. <laughs> um, but nevertheless, I mean, hate your competition, but respect them also. So listen to them, listen to what they do. And I will listen, okay? If I really want to hear stuff that is interesting to me, you know, like in games and stuff, plenty of great guys. Austin, Jason Graves, Tom Salt. I mean, lots of people. Okay, if I want to listen in movies, I'll probably listen to Johan Jonsson that really creates interesting texture. And for me, I get a lot of inspiration of this. Or Thomas Newman. Okay, yeah. so yes, do recommend listen to other stuff. Okay, thank you very much. Of course. Any more questions? If no, well then, thank you very much. It's time. Thank you.